guys? Randy with Team Getting Groceries coming at you live from downtown the Chafalaya Basin. So I broke a couple of personal bests today on my fishing trip. Uh, biggest catfish on my jig pole with a Getting Groceries jig. Uh, he ended up coming in like four and a half pounds. Before that, my record was like two and a half, three pounds. I, I didn't weigh it. I'm just guessing at it. But that record lasted all but about 10 minutes today when I hooked into another one. And not only did that guy break my record for the jig pole using the getting grocery crappy jig, it's also the biggest catfish I've ever caught on a rod and reel. Caught them on the jugs, but that's different. But uh, anyhow, I'm going home today. I'm gonna clean these things up. I'm gonna show you guys my method of doing it. It may not be the way you learn, but hopefully somebody gets something out of it. So stick with us. Here we go. Whatever it is, it's big because boy, he's been giving me a run for my money. I ain't got it to the top yet to know what it is. But it's making that jig pull hurt, I can guarantee you that. Looks like a big catfish. Tied yet? Oh yeah, that's a big catfish. Oh, my goodness. Look at the size of that thing. On a jig pole. Good night. We gonna eat good tonight, boy. So we got something else now. I can't tell where my cork's at in the video. This thing run all the way across the pond on me. Still waiting to see what it is. I think it's another big catfish. If it is, this might break my personal best that I just broke 10 minutes ago. Hold on for a second. I gotta do some reeling. Oh yeah, he's big. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that thing. Good God almighty. Getting groceries jigs, boy. I gotta get this thing in the net. I'll be right back, y'all. Good God almighty, look at the size of that thing. Put my foot neck to it. Let's see if we can get him out of here. And then I can weigh him. The last one was four and a half pounds. I'm gonna guess this one's probably six or seven. When that hook just come out of there too. That is a serious catfish for a jig pole. All right, I'll put him on a scale and take some pictures. I go over eight pounds. All right, guys, here we go. Now the first thing I want you to notice if you look around, I got no skinning pliers on the table. Now I got this thing strapped to my chest. I don't know how this gonna work out. But I guess we're going to find out here if it's not in my way. So, what I got, two different knives. The white one is a Dexter. It's a rigid boning knife. While my other one's a bubble, it could be any flex blade. You see that thing flex. But the reason I use the rigid knife is when I'm going to have to cut through this leather skin here that these catfish got 
I don't want to be trying to put this in and this thing's flexing all over. I want to be able to take that knife, go right in there, just like that. All right, so that's where I'm going to start my initial cut. When you get to this horn on the top, you have to go around. There's a little protrusion right here. And right down that spine. Now, some people see me doing this and they think I'm strange, right? Because they go and they cut it, hang it up in a tree or whatever, and they skin it out. This is the easiest way that I've found so far to do this. And it's basically, basically just like boning out a deer or something. I'm just going to follow all these bones all the way around. Get in there and start opening some of this up. And you can see, man, I'm right up against that bone. All right. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to find these ribs. And I want that knife. I'm going to want that knife to follow right on top of those ribs. There's my ribs. I'm going to take that knife and I can feel those ribs right here. Right on top of those ribs. And I'm just going to ride those ribs all the way back. back comes off. Right, when I get behind those ribs, I'm going to come back over here, take my flex blade, I'm going to go all the way through it. See if I can get a better angle on this. Now, I'm going to ride that bone all the way out. And there's my slab. There's my slab of meat. And you can look at the catfish. You can see this bone in here. Right up against that bone. All the way to the back. So there's really not a whole lot wasted as far as the bone. I'm going to take the belly off too. Alright, so there's my slab. Next step, now if this was a little bigger catfish, I know on the skin side there's going to be a bloodline. And I can take it right along this vertical line right here. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that anyhow. If this was a smaller catfish, I wouldn't worry about it. But I know this, this fish is going to have bloodline and that I'm going to have to cut out anyhow. So I'm going to follow right along that vertical line. Right off that skin, just like that. And you can see that blood line in there. Right here. All right, you don't want that. That's nasty, nasty, nasty. Next step. Take my, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot what I called it now. Flex blade. Now here's the trick. I'm gonna get in between that. And I wanna leave some of that blood on there, on that skin, cause that blood meat is no good neither. I want to grab this skin firmly. I'm going to lay the knife down. Now, I'm not going to push the knife through. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth. Back and forth. I don't want it to fall on the ground. And guys, if you're a deer hunter and you process your own meat, Whenever you're doing backstrap and you're trying to take that silver skin off of that backstrap, that method works well. Lay that backstrap down, silver side, silver side down, get your knife in between and grab that silver side and just work the skin and not the knife. Now, 
You see, I kind of missed some of the blood. I, I'm gonna have to go back and trim this off. You don't want none of this on there. But, but you can see, all the skin came off in one piece. There is absolutely no silver left in this filet. Get this bloodline off. And this works better when your meat's cold too. Like ice cold, been in the cooler for a while. The meat's a little firmer. Basically, it'd just be about, you know, removing this, uh, removing these, this bloodline and this blood meat, this red meat. So I'm gonna move on to the other one. I'm gonna get that done later. Same thing. I'm gonna get that knife between that skin and the meat. I'm gonna grab a hold of that skin. I'm gonna lay the knife down flat. I keep forgetting about the camera. And there you go, skin comes off all in one piece. Flip him over. And yeah, we got a little silver on that one, but it's not as bad as if we just skinned him out. That's going to come off with all this blood anyhow. Okay. Just repeat the steps on the other side. You know, you go in right behind the head, right outside of the bone. Same deal. Go all the way around it. So I'm going to get this side done, and then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, guys. I'm back. Got these pieces. That's all my fillets. That's all my slab. Now, this was an eight-pound fish. It took me literally maybe five minutes, even recording this, to do this. It takes you that long to hang that fish up and skin it out. So now I'm going to move on to the belly. And for the belly, I want to come right under those ribs. Right in front of these fins. All right, right around those fins. Off to the other side. Now follow those ribs up here. to the gullet I call it I don't know what you call it but that's what I call it flip them over right under the ribs on the other side right behind that horn there's our belly meat just like that now we got to clean this off a lot of people don't like the belly meat because there's fat in it you can see the fat right here let me get this thing up closer you see the fat, you see the silver skin, that mercury, and then that's the leather side. Same thing here, I'm just going to split this thing in half. Now this I'm going to do a little bit different. This one I'm going to put the knife in, get underneath it, and I'm going to push that knife through. Just like that. Look how pretty that comes out on the other side. All right, that's like the filet mignon. If you if you clean it right, you got a good piece of meat out of that. Same thing on the other side. Get that started. I'm just gonna run that blade right across that mercury. Look how pretty that is. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And there's your fat. You see that fat? We want to trim that off. You don't want any of that in there because that's why people don't like the belly. Get all that nasty stuff off of there. And that's it. I want to get a little bit of this bloodline taking it off so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So all you want to do, and, and please, make sure you have a sharp knife. Because a dull knife will hurt you faster than a sharp knife will. As long as you're not cutting in a direction that any of your members are in and you're cutting in a safe direction, a sharp knife is going to be 
Because you got a dull knife, you're trying to fight this. You're trying to fight it, you're trying to fight it, and you're holding in a place you shouldn't be holding in, and guess what? You're taking a trip to the hospital. But that's it, a sharp knife, and you just pass it right over the top of that meat. And it cuts it right off. And this is another part. These little fatty deposits. No matter what kind of fish that is, this is what's connected to these fins back here. Every fish, if you fillet close to that bone, you're going to get some of that. You want to pull that off because that doesn't taste all that great meat. And if you like me, and you got chicken, you just feed them the scraps. They know when daddy comes home with fish. And there it is, guys. All cut up and cleaned up, washed. Blood line's gone. Now's the time for you to take a look at it and make sure you got everything off. But what we're talking, 10 minutes? I got an eight pound catfish cleaned out. All right, so now, now I'm just gonna do this one uh, and let you guys just watch. It's the same process that I just did that one. Just in case I missed something on the other one. That joke is slippery. Oh, I should have added too. If this guy would have been a little bigger, I probably would have put that cheek out of there too, but I don't know even know if it's worth wasting time on. And I know this one maybe. Following them rib bones. All the way out. I don't have the fish in the camera, but I'm trying to cut away from myself and be safe while I do this. Let me get this angle better. Another thing is always, always work the fish around you. Don't work around the fish. All right, I should be getting to my cut. And there we go. Free all that up. And you can see how close you get to the back of his head. So there's nothing left in here where his head is. So this one's a little smaller. I'm gonna show you how to do it this way. Same thing when you're breaking it all up. And get in between that skin and that meat. Just like this. Grab that skin. And work the skin and not the knife. better grip. Just like that. Now you can see what happens. You see the blood line. You see all the blood marks. And this is what I was talking about earlier. This was connected to the old. You want to make sure you get that off of there. That's fatty tissue. It's going to be bad. It's going to be nasty. Blood line ain't too bad on this one. I think I might be able to work around it. This thing's pretty close to my face. You'll probably hear me breathing.
Right, that's one side. And remember guys, when you're doing that with the, uh, if you're processing your own deer at home, the way I'm removing the skin off of these catfish, you do the same thing with a back strap. Lay that back strap down and you lay that thing flat. And you work that, you work that silver skin. Now this one wasn't quite as big as the other one. This one was only four, a little over four and a half pounds. Still both of them were my personal best for them getting groceries, crappy jigs. And there we go on that. That's my other side. I'm gonna split this one. Right along that seam. I cut it anyhow on the other one. Just like that. Get that knife underneath that skin. Underneath that meat between the skin. And work that skin. Pull it off. Get a little piece in there like that. Cut it off. Again, guys, make sure you have a sharp knife. A dull knife will hurt you. That's both sides done. Under the rib, around the fin. Remember to work the fish around you, don't work around the fish. Up in the gullet. All the way around. Under those ribs. Shazam. Oh, still got another piece here. I thought I finished that side kind of quick. Now this case, I left some of that meat on the skin. And if you look at it, all that blood line is pretty much gone already. Seems like I'm work a whole lot better when I do it faster. I'm trying to get it done. Cut that bloodline out. Cut that fat off. That piece is ready. Ready for the pot, my man. Belly, I'm going to work the knife. And 
Let that knife do the work for me right there. A bit of cleaning. Put my knife underneath there. I got all the fat. Get this silver skin off. I messed that up. I'm gonna come from the other side. Oh. You're getting crazy, huh? Don't, uh, don't touch my feelings. Oh. You're going to have to fight you to touch my feelings. There we go. That belly is ready. Ready, ready. Other side. Not really a whole lot you can do that to mess it up <laughs> unless you just start hacking it. A little fat right there. And once you rinse it, you're gonna be able to see the fat good. It's gonna be like a gelatin. And that's it. That's two catfish. Clean and done. Like normally I would take these. I would take those, but I rinse these first ones off and I mean you can see what the end result looks like. You know, look how pretty that is. Let me find a piece of that belly. Look at that belly. Look how clean that is. So now it's ready to cut up. You can fry it, you can saute it, you can uh, grill it, put it in a cuvillon, whatever you want to do. All right, guys, I hope somebody learned something out of this. Uh, maybe you got a better way. Share it. If you got a better way, share it with me. But I'm gonna do anything I can not to have to skin them things out before I get started. But you just saw me, and I really wasn't in a rush on the second fish. Doesn't take a whole lot of time to do it this way. All right, y'all be good.